you know, I wanted to introduce somebody uh, okay. to us, and, and I'm going to get him on the line. This is Governor George Allen on, on Line 5, who's on a coronavirus task force. Welcome, Governor. Good morning. Well, good morning, Carrie, and good morning, Mike, and congratulations on your great show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you. And listen, um, uh, I heard about what you were doing, and I thought it was fantastic. Can you, can you, uh, you know, fairly briefly, but I know you're good at this, Governor, is let us know about some of the things that, that can't we get back, can't you just declare that it's over and get us everybody back to work uh, please. yesterday, please? We beg you, Carrie and Mike beg you. We're, I'm begging. I, I, wish I, I wish I could, but it's up to the governors, really, in these days. To You're a governor. Uh, you were a governor. Uh, Heritage put together the National Coronavirus Recovery Commission, and I wanted to bring balance and a, a concept of proportionality to this. And there's there's many, many really positive, constructive recommendations to governors, state legislators, Congress, the president, executive branch, and the private sector. A few of them. Let me just hit a few highlights here. Thank you, Governor. Uh, One, we need liability protection for businesses that are following guidelines, and that can be done at the Congress and the states. We need more supplies and tests and so forth. And, and one of the key things that I think is most important is that we no longer stay so vulnerable to China for so much of our essential medicines. We need to make, and one of our recommendations is create a more competitive, business-friendly environment to encourage medical supplies and pharmaceutical companies to manufacture and research and invest here in the United States of America. Heck, you wouldn't feed your dog dog food from China. Who Amen. Wants to ingest well, yeah. some people did, and they died. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no that's a, that's don't a... want any drywall either. From, no, exactly. from China. no, but all our all our antibiotics come from there. Yeah. That's, that's you know. No, you're right, Governor. That, uh, that many products from there are, are adulterated. No question about it. Yeah, adulterated, counterfeit, and you don't have the testing of it. So the, you know, quality really matters a great deal. I've, for years, talked about American energy independence, which we now have. But we need to, for our own national security, we need to make sure our medical supplies and, and medicines and the pharmaceutical agents are made here in the U.S., and, and if not here, at least with some trusted ally. Another thing you're talking about, uh, the, the grants of emergency powers to governors, one of our recommendations is that state legislators ought to review and possibly revise these, these grants of emergency powers to governors in light of executive actions that have been taken throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. And you see some states, Texas, Tennessee, uh, Georgia, Florida, Colorado, uh, some states never shut down. And, and those are the ones showing the lead. And the biggest example difference for Virginia was Tennessee was open up a month and they joined us and literally right across the double yellow line on State Street in Bristol. And I had friends who have businesses there, and they're, you know, literally looking across the street at shops and stores and restaurants open while we're still shut down. And then when we finally haltingly reopen, after making the entire state losers, the governor didn't want to pick winners or losers, so we all had to be losers, even in regions where where they didn't have a problem with this, which is one of our recommendations, (laughs) is reopen by county or by region, exactly. and also we Zone. reopen medical facilities and all the people laid off from hospitals because of this, and then now Northern Virginia and the commissars up there <laughs> want to stay shut down, which is just awful for some of the business, so many businesses up in Northern Virginia. So it's uh, some states have done this right, and you're seeing the ones who have and those that have not are slow, and then they're going to be complaining that they don't have enough revenue. Well, if you don't have people uh, <laughs> it, Get right. Right, working and paying their taxes, he, you're exactly right. I really I wish they would pay attention to you, uh, Governor. I, I, I wish they'd look at this Heritage Foundation um, group, but I've got a feeling that we have our governor's on his own, own path. And he was taught that kind of nonsense. He was saying we're going to be a commonwealth and behave like a commonwealth, which I, I was just that, a, means. that was just gibberish. gibberish. Uh, you know, uh, Governor, the. Uh, the circumstances of where we are really make what you're doing with the Heritage Foundation important. I hope that the interaction, particularly in the reconvene sec- session, maybe you can get the ears of some folks that are on the fence about this on legislative oversight, cutting some things short, and maybe equitable provisions. We're actually hearing from a lot of property owners who have been unable to 
recover their properties, even understanding economic hardship from people not able to pay rent. But we're seeing day after day more extensions, more extensions. You're going to see a lot of bankruptcies of people that own properties because they have Land- no choice. Imagine you're a landlord and, you've, and you, you know, you're mortgaged on your property and your tenants aren't paying their rent. It's a mess. Right, and those, and those, and those uh, banks hopefully would be we, – we've heard some good stories about banks, community banks and others right. who have been understanding about all of this with those – landlords, so to speak, or, you know, owners of the business, they have to pay insurance, they have to pay uh, their mortgages and the utilities and, and maybe security as well. And uh, there's a ripple effect through the economy. And this, this is, in my, the way I look at this, this is, this is a government decreed recession. And indeed, it's, it's a taking of people's property. And so to the extent the, a government is imposing this burden and taking of one's property, people ought to get just compensation this isn't the usual taking a property to widen a road or you know build a right. school but but it's it, it in effect that in the states that are so slow uh, unjustifiably i mean the, the data if you want to look at data our hospitals were not overrun that was the main reason that they wanted to shut everything down including other medical facilities and and anywhere far, the vast majority of deaths fatalities are in nursing homes and generally speaking those with underlying conditions that are over age 70 those vulnerable people need to be protected others need to have policies whether it's distancing and sanitation and so forth uh, you know that, that would be earlier, just just as effective that makes yeah. sense just use common sense have some balance have some proportionality rather than being paralyzed by fear well, Governor, that, that, that makes perfect sense, and, and uh, we're going to wrap it up in a second. But, Kerry, you had something Governor, you Governor, we'd love to have you back sometime to yeah. talk about the parole board, and the, they've opened the doors on prison cells. That's an, another topic for another day, but you and I have spoken about that in recent weeks. That that's another scandal that's brewing in Virginia, probably going to contribute to higher crime rates. So. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if criminals are loose and not behind bars, they are criminals, and they've shown that. Well, we could talk about that later. Right. I'd, I'd commend your listeners to read uh, coronavirus.com, coronavirus, excuse me, coronaviruscommission.com, and look at our recommendations for the states, the federales, and uh, the private sector, and ask your legislators, your governor, your members of Congress and the Senate to, to look at these ideas to revive our economy and make America the best place in the world to manufacture pharmaceuticals. Great. Thank you, Governor. Well, we, we are glad to have you. Yeah, greatly appreciate Thank it. You. It's been an honor. Continue the good works with the Heritage Foundation, sir. Thank you, Governor. Well, 